Right, hello, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so I'm a PhD student studying genetics up at the University of Liverpool, and I thought I'd take you on a breathless tour, and believe me when I say that I talk fast, uh, of how science, uh, public perception of science has changed throughout the years. So I've been with uh, three different topics mostly. So uh, we're going to start off with science and religion, how they've impacted upon one another. So this has changed massively over the centuries, so what we're going to do is start way back with the ancients, specifically the Egyptians. Now the Egyptians didn't have what we would call scientific understanding. Uh, they attributed pretty much everything that they saw to the gods, so things like the movement of the stars and planets. Um, whilst they lacked scientific understanding though, they did discover a hell of a lot just by observing these different phenomena and uh, utilising them to, in, in their worship of the gods. So a brilliant example of this is Karnak Temple in Luxor. Now on the winter solstice, the sun rises directly between the two pillars at the front of the temple, flooding the entire area of light uh, to worship the sun god Amun Ray. So it's a brilliant example. Um, but whilst the Egyptian uh, architects and engineers were considered great minds, they were always second to the gods. That changed when the Greeks came along and came up with what we would uh, call scientific methodology, and they realised that perhaps the gods aren't responsible for quite as much as everybody thought. Um, so you had some great minds, geniuses, even in the time, like Thales and Archimedes, but some of them did cause a lot of controversy, such as Hippocrates, who suggested that disease wasn't actually a divine punishment. Um, whilst it caused a lot of problems and uproar at the time, eventually people began to realise that science had a lot to offer in society. Despite this, centuries later, when Darwin comes along with his origin of species, it was still really controversial to suggest that the, uh, the church or your religious teachings were wrong. And when he and other people uh, with similarly controversial work came along, it caused people not just to question their religion, but also scientists. So the scientists around them had to work harder to try and answer the public's questions, which then drove society on further. So what goes around comes around, which is clearly what Justin Timberlake was thinking about. <laughs> um, so next topic is going to be science and equality, specifically looking at whether men and women are represented equally in science. I would say not. Uh, I did a Google search, Google image search of scientists the other day, and the guy who's about to come up on the left was the first uh, hit. See if there he is. Uh, closely followed by the guy wearing what looks like a giant electronic condom, which is slightly worrying. Uh, but basically, the idea is that uh, women are already represented as scientists. This science, that image is what people stereotypically think of. And I think this is largely down to what's happened in the past. So if you take as a good example, James Watson and Francis, Francis Crick, generally regarded as the two people who were responsible for the discovery of the structure of DNA. What a lot of people don't realize is that two other people worked with them on this, Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. Now, the three men got the uh, Nobel Prize uh, for the work. Uh, Rosalind Franklin, whose image on the right was uh, what helped Watson and Crick discover the structure, had died before the Nobel Prize was awarded, so she didn't get it. Now, it's events like this, either accidental or intentional, that have sort of meant that women aren't seen as being scientists stereotypically. And I do wonder if this kind of thing uh, is the problem, because that attitude seems to have ingrained in academia and you have old fuddy duddy professors going, oh, no, no, we must have a man who knows what he's doing to take up the position. This kind of thing also uh, is a big problem. This was uh, done by the European Commission called Science as a Girl thing to try and attract women into science. And I mean, this, seriously, watch the video on YouTube, it'd be hilarious if it wasn't so tragic. But basically, <laughs> they've got the idea completely wrong and haven't worked out through their audiences and how to speak to them. And that's something we need to uh, get the handle of as we go into the future. Because you, as the public and taxpayers are effectively funding our research. So to my mind, you have the right to know what we're doing with your money and what research is going on. So we need to try and get scientists talking to the public about the work transparently. Not everybody though is gonna be good at that. And I'm not even gonna say that, you know, that I would be good at that kind of thing. I, we're not all suited to the public. I was walking down the road the other day, so what can be described as a very ugly woman across the road, and then without thinking just went, Ugh. So you know, we're not all great with the public, and but the right people can get the right message across. So you've heard of the Brian Cox effect, where his programs have encouraged more people to study physics at university. Well, get people like him and David Attenborough, they get the right message across, encourage people, and make people interested in science, which will then question us and make us drive scientific research on further. Uh, finally, I've got to say, uh, we need to try and attract children to science as well, because they're going to be the next generation of scientists. Uh, we're going to try and make them see that it's interesting and exciting. Now, uh, with this competition, their uh, name there, uh, I took part in that. And it was great because you have uh, kids talking to scientists 
and ask them questions. So uh, we had one question I got was, uh, is there such a thing as a snazzle, which is apparently is a snail slash turtle. Uh, but yeah, basically, we need to talk to people, try and get the word out about science and encourage them. Uh, thank you very much.